Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Are there cards that you want to use in your ultimate team that you just can't because they don't get good links to other leagues and other nations? Well, EA sounds like they're going to fix that problem this weekend with the new radioactive promo that is coming out on FC24. We're going to take a look at all the leaks, that loading screen, and explain what this radioactive promo looks like it's going to be about. And also, take a look at what's happening right here, right now with Thunderstruck cards getting their upgrades yesterday as we hoped that they would. But some of those prices moved up but then they went down later because EA, guess what, released more lightning rounds with more supplies. So we're going to take a look at that and maybe is it time to start selling some of that fodder that just really didn't go up too much during the Black Friday promo like we thought it was going to. We're going to talk about fodder a little bit in today's video as well. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Let's get into things with yesterday's content as we always do, starting with a surprise icon SBC. Also, surprise good value here. Icon an 89 rated right back, left back, center defensive mid. Philip Lom, what a card. Like, this card is actually a really good card in game. Very versatile. That's the best word to use to describe him. 3 3, high, high. A lot of people, I think, use him in the defensive midfield. He's got great playstyles and a great playstyle plus with the intercept. Guys, he's a card, I think back to last year in FIFA 23, using his little bro card was a very, very good item. This year, this card looks to be pretty solid as well, and it's a really good price. 75% upvoted on Footbin. People are really liking this SBC because it is pretty cheap. It's basically only three squads besides the bronze, silver, and the gold for the loan. 84, 85, and 86. Pretty easy to get done. If Lama is a player that you would like to add to your team, it's a good card to do. Also, links to Balak. Two German icons recently dropped. Link, of course, together. Good links for the rest of your squad. That's a pretty good set of SBCs right there. And Lama is pretty cheap. So I'm a fan of that one. Cheap, versatile. A lot of people would like to use him, even as a super sub. He's very, very good in game. So that was a WSBC that was dropped yesterday. Pretty quiet day, right? I was able to get a couple more squads done of Mbappe. We are 12 of 20 on him. We did have another player SBC, though. It was the only other one that was leaked. Lee Kang in PSG card. Believe that he already had his first upgrade as well, right? It still shows under here the win one game for PSG's, uh, you know, next four matches to get the inform upgrade. But guys, I think EA released this card yesterday with that plus one already applied to his item since his inform is an 82 if he got an upgrade over that that'd be an 84 to be the promo card and then i guess the plus one inform off of that would be the 86 so i'm not imagining this card is going to get another win because again all the upgrades are live from november 24th and psg already won a game so this kang league card is cheap three star weak foot i think he has a little bit under what you would really want for this stage of the game and he doesn't have a play style plus which it seems like now all the cards that we want to be using need to have at least a good amount of playstyles or a playstyle plus. And I think that a lot of the cards coming in this next promo should have that as well. We'll talk about that a bit more in today's video. Now, the biggest SBC content yesterday was the Icon SBC refresh three more times. Literally the same exact SBC just refreshed once again, and it made informs go crazy. We opened a bunch of these yesterday. People are very excited to do these because it's an uncapped base Icon. We have hit some really, really big pulls from it on stream, but it again is, it's risky. It's an icon pack. You also have some pulls that are not good. Informs right now are like 47,000 coins a piece. I sold mine a bit too early at 45,000 coins. These guys just keep going up because EA didn't refresh the team of the week player pick, which so many people, myself included, I was doing like three, four, five of those a day to craft into other SPCs like the 83 times 10. And right now we have no way of getting team of the weeks except for packing them from random other packs, which is not that easy to do or going and buying it off the market. That's probably the biggest problem with this game right now is that EA keep requiring informs. And also they don't give us a way to get them easily at least via SBCs. They need to release another Team of the Week upgrade SBC. That's the biggest problem in this game right now, or stop requiring informs. But there's so many SBCs that still are requiring informs. These cards could go higher today, guys, because the 83 times 10 is refreshing. I'm going to want to do that SBC a couple more times for the very last day today on Thursday, but you're going to need informs for it. Those cards could go a bit higher, which seems crazy, but it is very possible. So that's kind of what's happening on that side of the fodder market. Now, speaking of fodder, which we're going to talk about a little bit more, since that Team of the Week pack didn't refresh, 82s and 83s are in 
the mud. 83s are a thousand coins apiece. That's what 82s were just a couple of days ago. It's purely because there was so much demand for everybody that needed informs and was doing that 82 plus player pick. Those cards are down bad. We also had Team of the Week 11 that was dropped yesterday. Garnacho, actually, I tried him out for a couple of games yesterday. He's actually a pretty solid card. EA gave him a double boost all the way, or actually, a, like a triple boost, all the way up to 86 rated, like a triple inform upgrade. They gave him the Acrobatic Plus playstyle. Like, GG's to EA. This is a fun card, and he actually is pretty good in game, I will say. I tried him out for a couple games in Rivals. He is not bad. We had a big card in re the release of Graham Hansen's her inform. Now, the question right now is, which one of these is in packs? Obviously, the informs in packs is on the market. This is not, we mentioned in yesterday's video, and we've talked about it on stream. Usually, when there's a promo card out and a player gets a team of the week, the promo card overlaps, right, till Friday and is in packs, and then the team of the week comes in. But as of right now, it looks like the team of the week Hanson is in packs. It is unknown for sure whether the 91 Hanson is in packs or not. We actually think that both of these cards could potentially be in packs right now because if you look at the loading screens on the game, you see Hanson team of the week advertised here and Hanson uh, best of campaign for her trailblazers card this is maybe what was talked about months ago before the game even released that ea said they could have multiple versions of a promo card and packs at the same time actually that's not a quote from ea that was a leak i don't think ea ever was quoted in saying they could do that but it honestly looks like it is now happening we've seen it with icons right little bro, bro big bro icons looks like we now have the potential and the ability to have a trailblazers hansen and an inform in packs at the same time um, and that just means more possibilities for the future, I guess. So it does mean that the gold card's out of packs, right? So the gold card's not in. We know that, but it looks like two different special versions can be in packs at the same time. That is pretty crazy. Now, let's talk about Thunderstruck cards because we finally got those upgrades yesterday, which actually I shouldn't be saying finally because EA updated these in pretty timely fashion. All of the league matches finished on Monday and they upgrade these cards on a Wednesday in the morning before the content drop. Like, GG's EA because that is actually pretty good. And they got all the upgrades right except for two. But if you take a look at the entire Thunderstruck team, a lot of prices yesterday when these upgrades happened went up. I take a look at a card like Hemp, right? She got herself an upgrade from an 88 to an 89. She went from 170,000 coins all the way to 230. And then, of course, content hit, and we had that supply coming in from the lightning rounds, and these, a lot of these cards started to drop back off again. But there was a lot of them that had spikes. Um, Emre Chan finally going up a bit. Ansu Fati went from like 320 or 330. I think 330 all the way to 386. Yes, some of them are inflated in price from where they were, which is what was expected for sure, since they're now higher rated and upgrade, upgraded from where they were before too. Some other cards like Little and Katoto. Katoto is actually not up that much. Only like 1,000, 2,000 coins. It's that next upgrade. If any of you guys are investing in these for the fodder range upgrades, right? Katoto goes to 92. She could be 80K is the cheapest 80 or 92 rated card in the game. 89 Little would go to a 90 rated card, which right now the cheapest 90 rated on the market. It's 50k. A lot of people are still investing in this card because of that. But once again, those upgrades, especially for Little and Katoto and Diani, the women's players, they're on international break right now. Those games are not going to be happening until I think like the 8th or the 10th of December. So it's not that far away. But if fodder prices were to drop a bit over the weekend, that could maybe in turn drop a couple of these cards as well even after they go out of packs and make it another opportunity to go in. So keep a close watch on a few of those, especially because as we get further and further on through the year, the squads of higher ratings come out as they, as EA have dropped more cards and they, they basically say, okay, we're allowing you to do higher rated squads and require more because we've dropped more cards. We'll talk about fodder a little bit more at the end of the video, but there were some pretty nice pr uh, price spikes that happened yesterday. I wasn't getting in on too many of those. Um, I did lazy sale a Katoto at 79,000 coins. I don't know. With these cards being in packs and getting packed a lot from the lightning rounds, I look at a guy like Bernardo Silva, 71,000 coins right now. He was like consistently 75 plus all day yesterday and really dropped off a lot because of the lightning rounds that they put out. And that's why I'm not buying a bunch of these really in you know preparation for today's market movements. I just feel like today on Thursday, these cards could move a little bit. 
but they're not going to move that much or enough to to make me warrant one to go buy in one of these um the only ones that i'm really the most interested in are the ones in the mini release because the mini release cards move the most on sufati we looked at his graph right fakir is one that moves a lot frimpong is up 100k he's up a lot even the icons like casillas and soul campbell i like those cards the best because they are the most rare and i think they're the best to be trading with right now if you're flipping any of the in packs cards now, if you're wanting to invest in one of these Thunderstruck cards as well, since they are alive, I know a lot of people are like, Nate, when should I be picking up a guy like, maybe it's Bernardo Silva, who you think, okay, Spurs aren't playing so well at the minute. City play Spurs this weekend. It's an opportunity for this Bernardo Silva to potentially get himself his first in-form upgrade, go to a 91 rated card. This card as well, I mean, I did use him yesterday in game. He's very good. Very good card with his dribbling and just all the other play styles that he has. Fun card to use for sure. Also, you can use him, basically get the same card for free with the Evolution version. But with that being said, um, if you want to buy one of these cards for an investment, because they are live cards, they are going out of packs. Live cards usually do pretty well. It's an insane, sick card design. These have potential, right? What I would say is wait for today's marquee matchups and maybe even wait for Friday, because once we get to Friday with the new promo cards coming out that we're going to talk about today, that could mean a little bit more panic and these cards may be still being packed Friday morning as people play their weekend league games and you could see some of their prices dip then or at least not start to go up until later on Friday. So I would say watch today's market, see what happens if they do more lightning rounds, marquee matchup supply. Maybe we wait a little bit to invest in some of these, but keep a close eye out because there should be some movements positively on these cards since they are live now there were a couple of mistakes yesterday actually we have to talk about this with the upgrades this is one of the craziest compensation situations i've ever seen first of all they upgraded him to an 85 instead of an 86 i believe it is fixed now he is 86 rated and then they made for some reason cruyff his uh player play style plus changed from power shot to tiki taka and there's very very few people that were impacted by this but this is just honestly nuts EA said that those who obtained the Thunderstruck Cruyff player item through the transfer market before the playstyle update. So basically, if they bought Cruyff with Tiki Taka playstyle, those people were going to get to keep the Cruyff card and also get their coins back. Well, there was a guy from the Twitch stream yesterday that actually bought Cruyff with Tiki Taka playstyle for 5.77 mil. So we're kind of waiting to see what happens, but it sounds like, I mean, pretty clear here that EA is going to give the coins back to you and you also get to keep the card. That's a crazy free 6 million coins that very few people, but a couple people are going to get on this game because they bought Cruyff when he had Tiki Taka instead of Power Shot. It still shows Tiki Taka here in Footbin, but in game it actually shows Power Shot. Like, that was crazy. Also, if any of you guys are having issues with the companion app and, like, chemistry calculations, EA knows about it. It is a visual glitch only, I believe. Once you're here on the game, the uh, chemistry in game shows just fine. So I want to kind of point that out because there's a lot of people asking questions about that. Now, we had a loading screen yesterday as well, right? And that's what I want to break into and get down to next is the radioactive promo. All the cards that have been leaked and what in the world this promo looks like. Now, as we talked about yesterday, some of the leaks that we saw about these cards giving more chemistry, it is true. This is the loading screen that EA dropped yesterday with the card design that's just absolutely crazy looking. And then a simple breakdown of how these cards will give chemistry to our squads. It's basically, think about a normal card, right? Provides one chem to the nation, to the club, and to the league. These cards double that. So it's almost like a hero because you get double for the league. It's almost like an icon because you get double for the nation. But it's also got its own twist on it because it's a player with a club. So you get double for the club as well. Guys, if you put a radioactive player in your team in the right position, automatically two chem points. All you have to do is add a manager league. You get that third manager league chem point and you're on boom, full chemistry. This is kind of cool. This is kind of cool because what it's going to allow you to do is take players from this promo that have been difficult to link before, or also if you really want to start to build some pretty cool hybrid squads, this is going to allow you to do a lot more hybrid squad building with actual players with clubs and not just by using heroes and icons to achieve that to get at least a pretty high chemistry amount. It's actually really sick, guys, because especially if you take a look at other players that are in this team, a lot of nations, like there's not as much French in here. Of course, you have Conte and you have Benzema, but they're from the Saudi League, right? You've got a lot of not as main nations. You don't have as many like, you know, Brazil, 
Netherlands, right? There's a lot of off nations, if you will, and some players from not as popular leagues as well. You've got, again, the Saudi League. You've got the MLS with a, a couple of cards inside of here. You've got some pretty big name players from just obscure nations or more obscure and not the popular nations, right? That are linking uh, going to make themselves linking in teams a lot better. Like Masrawi, this looks like a solid Bundesliga right back if they boost up his pace a little bit more, right? Oshawala, of course, has the Barca links, which helps, but now all you need is one more Liga F link, and boom, you're on full chem for Oshawala. Kavicha, one of the most difficult cards to link, and one of the reasons why his gold card was so cheap at the beginning of the game. Boom. Now all you have to do is add a Serie A player in your team with him, and you're basically in full chemistry for him, and it'll be easy to finish all the chemistry for your other cards. Messi for the MLS links. Like, this this promo has cool ideas. Like, I think it's cool. I think the concept here is really cool, and I think these cards are actually going to be used for a while on this game because they're going to provide chemistry-building opportunities for those different nations, for those different clubs and leagues that other cards in this game just can't do. Now, you just have to get past the card design because, again, this card design is bananas. Like, this isn't one of the league players right here. Um, I don't know if it's an impacts or if it's an SBC for this uh, Ben Acer, but he's not as a part of this Team 1 post that Foot Sheriff put out. This is a, a supposedly Team 1, could be an SBC or objective player involved in here. Pretty big uh, size of a team as well. A lot of players in there. If you add Ben Asser in there as well, um, you know, that's a pretty sizable team. So I'd have to imagine that maybe a couple of these are SBCs or objectives. But this card design is just, it's absolutely crazy. And also, interestingly enough, we've got the regular card design here, which was mislabeled as a Conmebol Libertadores flashback. Definitely not that. But we've also got a specific Evo car design, which has less around the edges, but it's got the Evo insignia on the very top of the card, um, which tells us that there's going to be very similar to Centurions, right? There's going to be a special evolution card type for the radioactive promo, which is sick if you think about it, to be completely honest. Putting a player into an Evo, you get to choose who it is, and it gets the chemistry links of a radioactive card. That's pretty cool. So I'm kind of a fan of the concept of this promo just because it's something that is completely different. And especially in the newer chemistry system, right? This is the second year of this chem system. Um, I think it gives us really cool ideas and really cool opportunities and uh, endless ideas, honestly, to start building players out in squads and putting some hybrid squads together that you couldn't really do before. It's also going to be interesting trading with these in future links to future cards that get leaked and, and put out for SBCs and objectives and stuff. That's going to be very, very interesting there as well. And uh, one of the last things that's leaked with this promo is some pretty crazy store packs. Uh, radioactive Ultraviolet pack, 60 rare golds, 82 plus. Um, gamma pack, 60 rare golds, 81 plus. EA is really kind of going hard here on the uh, the funny names. The Radioactive Alpha Pack, which is an 80 times 10 with some loans. Uh, 35 golds with 286 plus. And then you've also got in here um, a premium silver upgrade pack. Or I think it's called Common Silver and Common Gold Upgrade Packs. They updated the pack code here. This is a big W for those that like to grind bronze pack method and the league SBCs. Because this is going to give you a bunch of common silver and gold players that are very, very necessary for those SBC. So that's kind of big there, but really it just looks like normal store packs. I would have to imagine guys though, that they are going to run regular lightning rounds for this upcoming promo. Like since we've had lightning rounds started on this game, uh, they've expired since they dropped them yesterday. I think it is almost a hundred percent guaranteed each and every weekend from here on out, they are going to drop some other form of lightning round packs in the store just because they have now set that president. That's usually what happens during Black Friday. We get the first lightning rounds. This year we got it early, but we're gonna get more lightning rounds. And that worries me a little bit about some parts of the market, especially with fodder. So let's talk about the market, guys. If you look at my trans list right now, I was doing a couple of decent flips yesterday. Uh, Benzema was a decent flip for me. This is a card that got panic sold big time because he's in the new promo team, right? His card went from like 190,000 coins all the way down to 140. I was able to pick up a couple of there and sell them from 150s highs to 160s. So a decent flip there. Flipped a VVD, sold a Katoto to a Lazy. Um, Osaman was a quick 
risky flip. It was right when Napoli scored their first goal. I think I actually lost like 10K on the combined these card, two cards here. Uh, Frim Pong was a really good flip. I made like 40,000 coins there. That was a good one. DePaul, I bought at 162. Some of the informs that I bought at like 37,000 coins, again, sold too early. But as you'll notice, I get back here to the back. I have started to sell just a little bit, not a lot, but just a few of my higher rated fodder cards because a lot of the SBC grind, I think is gonna be departing from this game. Yes, there's still Mbappe. Yes, there's still Doug Leash. We have a Griezmann player of the month that is coming. We talked about yesterday, right? There's still demand for SBCs, but a lot of the craft, right? Today is the last day of the 83 times 10. And this SBC for me is, is still a must do, but it's one of those SBCs that it's, since it's gonna be going away and today is the last time we can do it three times, after that, it's going to be more difficult for me to craft somebody like Mbappe, and I'm probably going to be less apt to starting a new SBC, and there's going to be less demand for SBCs in general because a lot of those are going to be going away. Like the upgrade packs are going to be going away on Friday. Yes, there still might be like the icon packs hanging around for a day or two more. The hero pick, I think, refreshes again on Friday. That'll be hanging around. But like the huge SBC crafting grind that we have had during Black Friday is going away. I really just, I, I think that since we are heading into another weekend with lightning round supply and with the number of SBCs decreasing instead of increasing, that's why I started to sell and it, not like just quick sell and get it out right away, but like I'm listing some of these for lazy still, like 24, 25,000 coins, 89s listed up at 17K. You know, I'm starting to sell a little bit of that fodder though that was on my transfer list. I've used a lot of the fodder that I club stocked before Black Friday. Um, in my club on the Mbappe SBC, but I'm starting to sell a few of these just because I think it's going to end up dipping a bit into the weekend with the way that EA are doing the lightning rounds and the supply. I think it's going to keep going this weekend with more lightning rounds. So as, as long as the SBCs don't increase, I think that these cards are probably going to end up decreasing in value. And it's just, we have to talk about it again because we thought so much that fodder was going to do great during Black Friday. And I mean, yeah, there were some opportunities like 85s were 26,000 coins at one point on the weekend. Um, you know, 90s, 91s, like Kevin De Bruyne was probably one of the biggest Ws for a fodder investment. Even 90s, like these cards were all like 47,000 coins uh, the week before Black Friday. And when Mbappe came out, they went up and they went even to like uh, 56, like 60,000 coins, 57,000 coins, I guess, really is what the 90 rateds were at their peak on the weekend. But it was such a smaller peak and it was like the lower tier cards didn't even go up that much compared to previous years in Black Friday, which is why I think a lot of people are seeing Black Friday as a disappointment, right? Technically, we did see a bump in fodder like 84s went from 3.3K to 3.8. whoop de doo right? Last year, they were five or 6,000 coins. They went crazy, right? 83s went bananas last year as well. This year, I think EA just did such a great job of honestly just supplying fodder that we didn't expect through tradable store packs and then also through all the upgrade packs that were out in SBCs as well. I think it was that combination as well as we've said it a couple times too, but there are just a lot more gold players in packs this year with the addition of the women's leagues. Uh, it just, it puts so many more gold players into packs. And I think that ended up hurting a little bit of the fodder market rise as well. Basically EA did a really great job of still getting people to do a lot of SBCs, but also at the same time, um, they, they didn't make fodder prices go up because when they make fodder prices go up, they know that a lot of people on the market make coins. So I think they were able to still drain coins from people's accounts and try to get them to spend FC points on store packs because of all the SBCs that they put out. But then also at the same time, um, they, they didn't make the fodder prices go up and make people a lot of coins in terms of profit as well. So that's what I'm thinking on fodder guys. It's again, I'm disappointed in it as well because I held cards in my transfer list and on my club for weeks. Um, that really didn't net me that much profit. And I could have used those coins in other areas. To be completely honest, it was at least, at least decently safe if you bought fodder during Black Friday because those cards at least didn't diminish in value like a ton of the rest of the market did. But it's disappointing to not see those cards go up as much as we thought it did or they would. But I think there's going to be an opportunity again this weekend if the fodder prices drop off with SBCs going away. Also with people probably selling off some of their investments as well. That could be very possible with the combination of that and the supply coming maybe today a little bit and tomorrow. Uh, I do believe that we could see another really good investment opportunity on fodder this weekend 
it's just going to be, it's kind of left a sour taste in our mouth because like it didn't just, it didn't do that great during Black Friday. So the rest of the market today, I'm not buying much. If I'm being completely honest, like these Thunderstruck cards, I did pick up a couple Bernardo Silva under 70,000 coins just for the hope that he would maybe rise or I'd able to catch some lazies at like 75 to 77K with some good chemistry styles just because he's a very popular card. I'm not investing in a bunch of these cards right now. I'm kind of just waiting again, trying to trade with the rare ones if I'm trading with anything. And as I look at other out of packs cards, yeah, the FC Pro cards seem to move decent amounts, but really it's kind of just fluctuation trading and watching the graphs and watching these cards move. It's not like I feel like a ton of stuff is going to be moving on the market today. Probably small rises, if any, on some of these cards on the market. Just keep an eye on graphs. Like if a card is low, you might be able to flip it today if it's meta, if it's popular, especially if it's rare. But that's what I'm trying to keep to, the rare, popular, and meta stuff right now on this game as a lot of the focus still is with SBCs. I mean, informs are almost 50K a piece. The focus right now in this game is still with SBCs. So the last thing today, Thursday content, what am I expecting? Not that big of a day. Rivals rewards, yep, maybe a bit of market movements. The last day for the refresh of some of these SBCs. Of course, marquee matchups comes out every single Thursday. We're gonna be getting a new set of those today. And probably, like, could that be it? Like, it actually could be it. Um, I know EA mentioned the moments set piece thing. I don't know if that happened at all yesterday. I didn't check the moments uh, area of the game. Um, but that's probably going to be it, guys. I think it's going to be a pretty slow day today on this game. Um, maybe some market movements you could trade in and out of with the new team of the week and stuff like that since they are pretty rare. So I'd watch those fluctuations today as well as the Thunderstruck cards. But just be careful, I think. Um, the same with Road to the Knockouts. We've had some pretty big Road to the Knockout price movements. Bruno Fernandez down bad after United's uh, result yesterday. Drawing to Galatasaray from 150k down to 88. He is back up a little bit. They are not out of it, but it is looking grim for an upgrade for him there. And a lot of the rest of the market of impacts cards continues to just kind of stay stagnant. Uh, Saka, 330k. He's down, even though they were expected to win. He was a re-release card that was in packs, so he's down a little bit. A lot of the market seems, again, just stagnant at the moment. So besides informs, right? And when informs are 50k a piece, you know EA are draining a lot of coins. So that could really be a... Um, one of the definitions as to why the market is staying pretty stagnant, but we'll see if that changes at all today. We'll probably do some flips, but again, I would really stress the rare cards, the out-of-pack specials, and stuff that is just meta that people want to actually buy for their teams. That's what I would focus on today. So if that video is enjoyable or helps you out at all, if you enjoyed it today, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you on a Twitch stream today. That link is in the description. It's the Nathan account. See you guys there. Peace.